Captain. It's good to see y'all, Tony. Um, anyway, Tuesday. Wow, hard to believe this. Another one. 63 of these, I think it is now. But I got, hey, Chuck, Jim Bob, Riddell, yeah, man. Jeremy. Good to see you too, Jeremy. Man, that's a fast bike you got there. I love watching you guys go fast. I haven't been on the track in a while since we were at the last Hogs Going Wild the last time I went over to the track and ran. I'm looking forward to going this week. Uh, we'll see that uh, that maybe I can get that old silver um, Milwaukee 8 into the um, into the tens as my goal. I want to try and go uh, 1080 something with it. Foot shift in. Hey Walter, I know that doesn't sound fast, y'all, but listen, the old the old uh, Road Kings Milwaukee 8 stock Road Kings go 1380s, 14Os. Some people run low 13s with them, but. It's, a, it's pretty cool when you pick up three seconds in anything, a car, a motorcycle. Imagine if you had a Hayabusa, how much work it is to pick up three seconds. If you go 950 with it, then 850, 750, 650. Three seconds is a lot, man. Three seconds is a lot on a Camaro and a Mustang and a Cadillac CTSV, a Corvette, a Yamaha, a Kawasaki, or a Harley. So picking up three seconds is cool. I love to... To, to take one that we ran as hard as we can go and make it run the best numbers and try and run like a 1350 with it and then bring it in and go through, put a thrasher kit, do the heads in the cam, port it, put bigger valves, you know, and a better throttle body and manifold and, and then do a good tune with a nice pipe and pick up from 1350 to 1250, from 1250 to 1150, from 1150 to 1050. It's very cool. And then when you get one down into the 950s on all motor, that's pretty cool. Now this weekend, we'll see some 850 guys, you know, with some baggers that are gonna have uh, turbochargers on them. There's gonna maybe some eight second guys with nitrous and uh, it takes a lot of power. Hey, Lindsay, Walter, it's good seeing you guys, man. Yeah, I might can come see some of that stuff. But what I'm gonna talk to you guys about is is this this a little bit of dyno information I wanna share with you today. I've, I've printed some dyno sheets and I want to talk about how we move the power band into the curve and into the RPM range that we operate and what we want to see. So, you know, um, just for an example, we got three cams that we sell here for the Milwaukee 8. I'm going to turn this over so, this, so we can see the, the table here. Hey, Clifford, Stephen, Michael. So we have, we have um, you know, the street strip cam that we like to use. That's, that's a really cool setup. Everybody has their grind. Then we have the sort of a three quarter race, which is sort of some street, some, some strip. And then we have a full race, you know, and the full race is made for maximum effort. Now, just to dr draw something on the table here, let's see if I can make this work. You got a horsepower curve that looks like this. Almost all horsepower curves look like this. 52, 52, let's say it's right here. So that means that some, whatever the horsepower is here will also be this much torque at 52, 52. So a mathematical fact that can't be changed. Don't care if you're an engine builder under the equator, over the equator, west coast, the east coast, Europe, Japan, horsepower and torque will have the same numbers right here. So if you're gonna make more torque early, your torque curve will look like this, and your horsepower curve could look like this. This is just an example. So your torque will be left of 5252, and your horsepower will be right of 5252. This is where horsepower is. I know this sounds very simplistic, but it's not understood by many. So if you want more torque than you want horsepower, you're going to have to do it to the left of 52. This is RPM, y'all. One more time. This is RPM, 5,252 RPM. You know where that is on your tack, right? It's a little bit past halfway on your Harley. It's right over here. Then it's got six and seven and eight, maybe if you're lucky to have one that turns that high. And this over here, wherever peak torque is, that might be 3,000 RPM. And over here, I want peak horsepower over here. Maybe that's at 6,000 RPM. Well, let's say seven. Too far away from 5,200. Okay?
Everybody on here so far? Peak torque over here left of 5,200 RPM, say at 3,000, just to call a number out. Horsepower peak is over here to the right of 5,200. Horsepower peak, let's say at 7,000 RPM. Now, I'm going to get a dyno sheet and show you. Here's my little, this is our shop bike. This is a 124. It's got dish top pistons. It's a little, uh, it's a little 124 Milwaukee 8. It has a 10 and a half to 1. It only makes 148 horsepower, which is really good for a 124 with 10 and a half to 1. You can run this on 91 octane all day long. It's tuned up real nice with the air fuel right. I left that on there because I was pretty proud of this line. <laughs> You, if you're not real proud of the of the air fuel line here, you can click on single screen and get just this screen. But if you're if you're really happy with how cool your tune line looks, <laughs> you can click at the top up here where it says dual screen, and you can get the air fuels on there. So that's you guys at Dyno would know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but this is a just a regular old a small cam like the 3030 cam with a 124 flat top. Well, I mean dish top, so it's got low compression. But here's what my key to this one is. This is what I wanted to show you. This makes peak torque 4,500 RPM, all right? Peak torque at 4,500 RPM. It makes peak horsepower at 5,800 RPM. Now, if you'll look, many of you guys that are really tuned up on this stuff, you'll notice that I went too far. You see 6,000 right here? I over-revved this engine on the dyno because I'm going to race it. I'm going to run this Friday and see how fast I can make it go. And I'm going to talk to you about why in a minute I revved it so high. But as you can see, from 6,000 on, I'm just falling. Look at this. I lost how much? I don't know. I lost 5 horsepower by 6,500, and I probably lost 10 horsepower by 7,000. So you can see this is way over revved. Remember that because I'm going to talk to you about it in a minute. Now, over here... This, this engine has really good power way over here at 2,500. It has over 120 foot-pounds over here at uh, 2,500. But this is just an example so I can show you a dyno sheet. Now, here is a little bit bigger engine, but this has a full race cam in it. And I want you to see the difference in the power curves. All right, y'all. Come on, man. Here we go. You can see the difference in the power curves. This one is just steady going up. Doesn't start off very big, but it's steady going up. And it doesn't run out of air until 6,500 RPM. Can you see that? This full race lets us continue to build all the way up. It made peak power at 6,400, it's almost 6,500. Yeah, it says 177 horse and only 161 foot pounds. I mean, not only. That's a really good number. But this is a, a 133, like a uh, boogeyman that we did for Justin Collier, where uh, I ran in the nines with this foot shift in it, Milwaukee 8. And I wanted to share with you that the peak power, peak horsepower is way over here. And let's look at 5200. Here's 5200. This is where they make the same power. So just notice, peak torque is left of 5200, and peak horsepower is to the right of 5200. Even though it's really close, peak torque is at 4,900, which is right here. Peak torque is really close. But this will show you the engine's got bigger valves, bigger pipe, bigger cam, and it continues to rev at high RPM. Now, this one belongs to a customer, so I can't show the name, but I want you to see this, this power curve. We don't care, really, how much power this makes. To the left of this and i'll explain that to you in a minute yes when you ride on the street see this this is a full race and look at the rpm it is still climbing this rpm is still going up now at 5200 rpm you can see peak torques over here i think it's at 4800 so peak torques over here so that's to the left of 5200 you with me and the peak horsepower is way to the right of 5200 All right, is that making sense to everybody yet? All right, why is that important? Well, let's talk about that for a moment. All right, I'm going to draw a gear chart. 
this is like a pro stock car. I'm gonna be pretty vague here. They put on the two step at the starting line. They drop the clutch. They rev up to 10,500. They shift to the next gear. They rev up to 10,500. They shift to the next gear. They rev, shift to the next gear, rev up 10,500. They shift to the next gear, rev up 10,500, shift to the next gear. And then they go through the finish line at 10,500. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Pro stock car is allowed a five speed. So this would be from the start line to the stripe, 6.5 seconds, okay? First gear, big drop. Second gear, big drop. Third gear, big drop. Fourth gear, big drop. Fifth gear, bang, out to the finish line. Now, how does this line up with the this this the, the horsepower curve on the dyno matters here? Not the torque as much because this engine, let's say that they turn this 10.5 right here. All right, and this, let's say it falls to 9,000. So there's only 1,500 RPM from here to here. Maybe this one falls to 92. Maybe this one falls to 93. And maybe this one falls all the way back to 92 again. And the pro stock car guys, they juggle ratios like I juggle credit cards trying to pay my bills. They change all these ratios trying to stay on the cam. And I don't know. Some people call it staying on the pipe. Some people call it staying on the cam. What can we learn from this? Well, in our pro stock motorcycle racing career, we were very fortunate to run a six speed, which allowed us to narrow these up to where we could get some more acceleration and stay on the pipe longer. Now, my own personal opinion about this is, is I would pick out where I spent the most time here. I mean, if you did an average from the starting line to the finish line, what is your average RPM? It should be somewhere right in here. That's about where you're going you're gonna to spend the most time. Well, if you shift good, that should be near your horsepower peak. That average should be near your horsepower peak. On our Harleys, it's different than a pro stock car, and I'm going to tell you why. I don't know the drag coefficient number of the pro stock cars now, but I'm going to say it's under 0.3, maybe it's 0.29 to 0.27 drag coefficient. That means the thing is really slippery. So it can stand to fall off the cam on the shifts a little bit. Our Harleys... When we go to the drag strip, I see, like, Michael bielan has got the quickest bagger and the fastest bagger right now going, I think he went a 820-something and run a lot of 830s and 840s at 170 miles an hour with a stock six-speed. And the six-speed in the Milwaukee 8 has a lot of drop. It has a lot of drop. It falls. You have to go up pretty high, and it falls. And you go up pretty high, and it falls. You go up pretty high, and it falls. Now, his turbo bike, and he hadn't been in the wind tunnel, I don't think, but I know when we did with the Pro Stock motorcycle, we were like 0.58 drag, whereas the car was like 0.29. So this pushes a ton more air. So the Pro Stock motorcycle is twice as dirty as the Pro Stock car. This thing, these Pro Stock cars, when they're coming down the track, they look like um, a bar of soap. I mean, they really do. I mean, this thing here looks like a, a caboose compared to a Pro Stock car. I mean, that thing really and truly looks like a bar of soap. I mean, it is round and tapered and rounded off and it just really goes through the air very nice so the pro stock motorcycle doesn't so we have to do a different shape on our on our gears the way we shift those and i'll do it a little smaller maybe i can stay on the screen this time but we put it on two step we wind up first gear and then we come down to second then we wind up second and come down to third we wind up third and we come down to fourth and we wind up fourth we come down to fifth we wind up fifth and we come down to sixth, and then we go out the back door if you'll notice, the drop is, it mutter doesn't pull down. The engine doesn't pull down as much in each gear. And the reason that is, is because we're so dirty. Our aerodynamics are so dirty that we don't have enough power at this RPM to pull a dirty aerodynamic piece. We're trying to push a brick down the racetrack, whereas the pro stock car looks like this going down the track. And the pro stock motorcycle looks like this going down the racetrack is in comparison i mean that's a gross exaggeration but 
It's not slippery enough to have the big drops like a pro stock car. I mean, they can drop this much, this much, this much, and this much. Where when they fall this far from peak, I mean from uh, horsepower shift points, they have enough power down here because they're, they only get five gears. Pro stock cars get five gears. Pro stock motorcycles get six. Pro stock car gets five gears. Pro stock motorcycle gets six. All right, why does this matter to you, you Harley guys? Wow, how how does that how how does that have anything to do with us? Well, when we go to, when I go to the drag strip with my little 124 Friday, I'm going to turn it this far in first gear because my Harley has a 3,000 RPM drop between first and second gear. So when I shift this thing at 7,000, I'm going to fall back to 4,000. So if I shift it at peak horsepower, like at 6,000, and I fall back 3,000, I'm going to come back. What's that? One, two, three. I'm going to fall to 3,000. So I only have 80 horsepower when I shift to second if I shift here. So I'm going to turn it to seven, and when I shift, I'm going to have 110 horsepower. When I shift to second gear, I'm going to drop in. Let's do this right. 3,000 RPM between first and second. I'm going to go from seven to four. So when I shift to second gear, I'm going to come into second gear at 110, 110 horsepower. And if I shift it at 6,000, where peak horsepower is, see right here, peak power, 5,800. If I shift here, I'm going to fall back to 6,000, one, two, three, yep. I'm going to come back to 79 horsepower. Now, let me show you how I'm going to outrun you. If you come to the track with 148 horsepower motorcycle with 149 foot-pounds of torque, I'm going to outrun you by 10 bike lengths because I'm going to use, when I shift a second, I'm going to drop in at 110 and keep going to 140. 110, 140, 110. You're going to shift at peak horsepower, and you're going to fall back to 79 horsepower. As soon as we shift a second, I'm going to put three bike lengths on you. And as soon as we shift a third, I'm going to put three bike lengths on you. And as soon as we shift a fourth, I'm going to put three bike lengths on you. How about that for the secret of the day? And there's more. Wait, there's more, as Justin told me one day. This is cool. The drops are 3,000 to second. It's about 2,000 to third. It's about 1,500 to the next gear. And it's about 1,400 to the next gear. And then it's about 1,000 to the next gear. So that means... Your shift points have to change. You can't run the same shift point. So if I get on your motorcycle and I go quicker than you ever did, I'm using an advantage that I understand a little better. That's why I'm sharing it with you guys. Hey, Justin. But wait, there's more. So when you got a guy that has 148 horsepower, 124, and he just steady drives away for you, don't call cheat. Call, you need to learn how to use the power you got because I notice all the, dyno, not all the dyno sheets, but most dyno sheets we see in the world being dynoed, some people don't even go to peak, like this one. How much horsepower do you think this engine has if I was to turn it 62, 3, 4, 6,400? Would this keep going up? Would it keep going higher? Or would it roll over? I don't know, but it's not time to shift. Not here. Not here. You want to turn that bad boy till it rolls over. And please understand, it's not, it's not every gear. First gear, you got to go really far so you don't fall out of your power zone. Second gear, you don't have to go as far because you're going to fall back to your power zone easier. Next gear, you don't have to shift as quite as far. So the one-two shift is where you got to turn it. And learn your drops, man. It's in the manual. Your drops are in the manual, you guys. You can look them up. You can read about it in your owner's manual. It tells you all the ratios. The Baker six-speed has all the ratios in it. Do some math. Figure out if I turn at 7,000 RPM and I shift a second gear, what RPM is it going to fall to? If I shift a third gear, what RPM is it going to fall to? And then map it out on the dyno sheet so you can learn your shift points. And wait, there's more. The guys with the G-meters... Got everybody covered. When you take off from the starting line, the G-meter goes right up. When you wind up first gear, 
it starts falling off. When it falls off and you shift a second, you want it to line up with second gear. The G meter now. I see so many pro stock guys shifting right when it's getting ready to go up. And then they put it in second. And it has more power in first in second gear than it had in first. And it would not more power, but more G force. So what you gotta do is you gotta turn this one harder, and then when you shift to second. So I use the G meter to line up my shift points. You'll learn about that too if you get you one and learn about it. Anyway, people say seat of the pants is cool. It is very cool to have seat of the pants and learn how to do it by seat of the pants. It is very cool. And so when I'm racing on the Harleys myself, I turn it as far as I can go to where I feel it nose over and then I shift to second. And then I turn it as far as I can until I feel it nose over and then I shift to third. And don't tell everything. Paul, don't tell everything. That's exactly right. It's all right, man. I'm not going to race forever. I need you guys to keep everybody just step up and keep going faster. So take what you learned here today and maybe put your spin on it. I see some of you guys do really good, like Michael Beelan. He goes really, really fast. And then Matt Smith on his pro stock motorcycle and, and the Harley team, man, they got that stuff figured out. The guys that do that for a living, they're really clocked in. Uh, that, uh, that Steve Nichols guy that works with the Max ECU, he's really, really sharp on all this stuff. He knows what's up. And uh, it takes a lot of experience. And I didn't, hey, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't learn all this like by reading a book or looking on the internet. It's not really on Google. Maybe one day it'll be on Google, but right now there's not a book, there's not a, there's not a video you can watch unless you go check out Tech Talk Tuesday. But um, I just, I just felt like I needed to share a little bit about that right day, right there about, uh, you know, the G meter. Uh, I want to tell you too. If you, if you had a G-meter, if you're going to drag race like we did in Pro Stock, you want your G-force to be finished at the finish line. And the reason I say that is because you're already going fast. And you want the most G-force when you're going slow. Say that back to me. You want the most G-force when you're going slow, and you want the least amount of G-force when you're going fast. You run out of time, man. You only get 1,320 feet. You need to have the most G-force you can before the finish line, not at the finish line. If you want more G-Force at the finish line, I recommend you do half-mile racing. I recommend you do Bonneville. And then, of course, the NASCAR guys, too. Think about it. They go to Daytona or Talladega, and they come off turn four within 200 RPM of the, going to the end of the straightaway. So they don't need any acceleration, hardly at all. Acceleration is, man, for drag racing. We want to go from the bottom to the top in every gear as quick as we can. And the shift points are on us because the camshaft tells us where the power is. And wherever that power is, the, you know the G meter looks almost like the torque curve. When I look at a torque curve or a G meter curve, it almost looks like the torque curve or the horsepower curve. So you can over rev it. Like this, uh, this, this, this dyno sheet that I drew right here, that I, I took pictures of right here, I wanna show it one more time before I get y'all dizzy. This is what the G meter would look like, where it's falling over, right? Okay, I over revved this engine, but I did it on purpose. I was running this till it quit peaking. I went 6,000, then I went 61, 62, 63, 64. And then I was getting braver and braver and braver. And this engine has enough valve train and it. it has good springs, good retainers, nice lightweight parts. So this engine will turn 7,000 without tearing it up. So I got to move the rev limiter a little bit just to go drag racing fast. And, uh, but it won't last. If you want to go fast, it won't last. <laughs> oh all right this is not you guys that want to drive to uh, Sturgis and back or you want to go to Daytona or you want to go to Gulfport Mississippi on the highway you want to go to California cross country all those things those are great but that's not what this is about you want all your power to the left of 5200 if you're going to do cross country touring you don't want to rev it up over there to the right of 5252 5200 rpm to the left is peak torque and 5200 rpm is horsepower to the right of 5200 is peak horsepower is on this side of the dyno sheet horsepower is on this side of 5200 and torque is on this side of 5200 on the dyno sheet 
Think about the pro stock car again before I turn off, or the pro stock motorcycle where they shift at 14,000 or 12,000 or 13,000 or 11,000. Think about where their peak torque is. <laughs> it's not important because they're the same number, horsepower and torque are the same number at 5,200 RPM. And a pro stock car and a pro stock motorcycle, they run all the way off the page over here. 5,200 is so far off the page. Better not try to see how much power it makes at 5,200 on a pro stock engine. You'll be picking up parts. Hey, God bless y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Tech Talk number 63, I believe. It's Tuesday, America's Georgia. Take care of everybody, man. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Appreciate you so much for watching. Stay in touch. Send me notes. Send me messages.